Okay, um, I, I understand that uh, but probably that sound is not ready, but we will take a listen to that anytime soon to know what exactly our Transition Monetary Group is passing across because that will be quite interesting. Yeah. Because um, looking at the example you alluded to, it is quite, you know, very embarrassing to know that people will just come, clear video issue, it takes United States to now, you know, do visa ban on some of these election regas, some of these election uh, violence perpetrators. What do we need to do to really serve as deterrent? Well, the uh, predecessor of the current um, Chief Justice of Nigeria, uh, the man from Cross River State, uh, uh, actually said something, which is about... That's Ononghe. Ononghe, Walter Ononghe. Uh, said something about having separate courts uh, to actually, uh, you know, handle ele election matters. Offenders. I know that he also talked about having separate courts for corruption cases. And I know that uh, that actually has uh, commenced. Uh, I know that there are a number of courts to do that in Lagos uh, I, because there was a time I followed that particular story. But what is very important is not to be seen as jokers. Now, in Nigeria, um, one of the most ridiculous things um, that happen, especially when it comes to dealing with corruption issues or electoral issues, is that when you see proof, let us look at the 2019 elections here. In February, especially in the Alimosho area, we saw how talks came to polling boats, how they destroyed ballot boxes. Some of them had guns in their hands, and it took a brief policeman who was collecting the ballot boxes from them. We saw the faces of those people. And as I speak, nothing of the sort regarding trying them, arresting them, had been done. So I, as much as the monitoring group made that statement, I think the reality of it is to put more pressure. It might not be enough to put it out that, okay, we should have electoral offenses tried immediately and all of that. I think that there should be more we have to do. For instance, we've had in this country a verified video by the BBC and all of that about a governor of a state in the North Kano taking bribe and tucking it into his Baban Riga. The video, according to what I actually researched into, the video was verified by nothing less than three, four, five uh, media houses, and they said there was nothing doctored in the video. The video was just true. So what I'm saying is we have to stop uh, ridiculing ourselves if indeed we want to deal with the issues that affect us. It therefore means we have to develop the will, the capacities to be able to do what we have to do. It's in this country that we've had judges taken to court over the fact that we've had some judges' appointment terminated. These are people that are supposed to be those who manage or keep the gates of justice in the country, but they were indicted. We've had instances where they say some judges kept adjourning cases for like forever to frustrate the person that actually should have been favored with all the evidence before the person in question. So I think that when we're talking about trying electoral offenders, we have to look at what has happened in some cases where they felt certain things. Just so let, let me go back to Justice Salami and Aloysius Kassina Alu, for instance. The reason Salami and Aloysius Kassina Alu had the reef they had that Salami was removed from the appeal court and lots of things were not done, even by the Jonathan administration, was over the Sokoto elections. That is electoral offense. One of the legal communities says, I want to do what I should do. The superior says, you should not do what you must do. It therefore means that the will means that the party... And, and, and to also you know, advance this conversation, yes, you please. also remember how they went into his history, how he was accused of helping a party at yeah. the appeal court, and it got so messy. It's so, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it was a very messy thing. Exactly. And, and if you look at it, don't forget that Salami is back as the person appointed to actually look into the Magu allegations exactly. and the fact that monies, there's discrepancies. And as I speak, there are lots of issues from the legal team of Ibrahim Magu that Salami is acting as an emperor, is not allowing his entire legal counsel to sit and be there. So another thing is brewing. So a situation where you had some problems with the electoral offense and certain persons want to rule properly. And don't forget that the APC in question happens to be a party 
as much as maybe the PDP or the APC in this time, to have benefited from, okay, proper judicial intervention. So I, I think that it's uh, something that we really need to have conversation. So the monitoring group wouldn't be described as wrong in their position of trying electoral offenses, but what is important is to put pressure. Don't forget, pressure has to be in place. For instance, they were talking about state policing, state policing. The federal government was dilly-dallying. Immediately they had a Motekun, they created community policing. So that means there must be strategy in place to make the federal government act. For instance, the visa policy has made the Kogi state governor to make a statement. The visa policy is making many of them uncomfortable because if you look at it, except... Okay, the names are coming out now. Uh, not so much. <laughs> you know, America refused to mention the names. You know, the reality... But, but let, let, let no, me no, bring no, okay. Wale into the okay, conversation okay, because you've touched on so many Sorry, issues please. that has yeah. to do with... Uh, okay, before then, I understand the, the, the sound bite is ready. Let's take a listen to... Abiola Akiode, that's the president of Transition Monetary Group. Then we'll come back. We're concerned about the uh, way and manner the deployment will go tomorrow. We do hope that it will be scientific enough to be able to reach you know, as many places as possible because if we have 30, 31,000 uh, police officers, that's quite huge. Often time, we hear the numbers, but in terms of impact, uh, they are not always uh, felt. Um, so, by and large, we do hope that um, the election tomorrow will be free and fair. However, we are calling for the establishment of mobile courts on election day to uh, summarily uh, prosecute election of offenders. It might not come to fruition in this election, but we do hope that such can uh, be uh, a way of addressing the violence that we keep seeing in election. In other countries where they have had mobile court on election day, it has helped in terms of stemming violence. Because if a kingpin is arrested you know, on election day, might also deter the others who might want to do uh, the same. Now that they've decided to place three policemen in one police unit, I think that will you know, help a long way to you know, reassuring the citizenry that uh, they, are, they won't be defranchised. And I also believe their presence will do a whole lot good. Through the intervention of the Omonobane do Kwa Kolokolo, Ewai no Gidigan, as you know, with uh, his, his intervention, you know, everybody they've come down, they've laid down their arms because we do not go against our Oba. We respect our Oba because is a representative of God here on earth. So the Beninese have respect for him. I believe the election will be peaceful. We believe that the citizens are safe as far as security is concerned. And also our vote will be counted on that day of election. So we are assuring the citizens that they should not be scared Police are on ground, as they assured us, so we will be available. The citizens should watch out, the head of security agencies, the army, the police, the civil defense, the air force, the immigration, and so on and so forth, should, work, should watch out for those who may try to impersonate them. By wearing their uniform, but even uh, they are, they are vehicles, because we have seen it in the past. We should watch us so that we can be able to fish out those who may like to cause violence in the state. Okay, those were some of the sound bites from uh, Transition Monitoring Group, the press briefing that was done yesterday. Um, Kunu, I'm coming back to you. Wally, I, I, you know, Kunu made a mention of um, how United States elections were conducted. And uh, I recall covering that election for... Can you repeat the question? Yes, I'm still here to ask the question. So I, I'm just saying that talking about our election, it's so sad that the major concern is, has to do with security issues. And I'm trying to make a reference to an election I covered four years ago in America... And it was shocking that, number one, there was no public holiday. Number two, you will hardly know there was election going on. And it was so peaceful. It was a pure civil exercise. 
How yes. can we get it right? I'm, I'm really bothered. We'll get it right. I can assure you. When democracy started, when democracy started particularly this one in 1999, the vote was not taken, and voters are not taken. And God used that to now an improvement in this region. Now we have a whole lot of people who are interested in the elections and are having elections. When we started more than 20 or close to 20 years ago, the crowd was not complete. And when we want to go to the election monitoring, we are just trying to give it off. We are ensuring that indeed we add value to the electoral process. I'm sure many people who are watching and listening or hearing this program will agree that when they started, it was a piece of paper that was a ballot of paper. But now, a ballot paper now is so much, uh, it, it has security feature, it has a color, it has a number, and it has attachment to the world and the local government. So the issue of people running up and down, smashing ballot boxes, have not been reduced. They are now, the politicians again are trying another thing. No doubt we'll get them, but again, we're not, we are working towards putting a structure of ground where people will just go and go to do their own thing. The, the ballot will be secured. Nobody needs, we don't even need soldiers, we don't need policemen, we don't need all this security. And of course, those who conduct the election, they will be well secured, they will be, their welfare will be taken care of. And of course, the system will be there. We are watching and think. I'm happy you covered an election in America. Most of us who have covered elections outside this country. So we know the systems that are there. We are trying to improve them in. But don't forget that the politicians are the people who have to continue to it. Because we have to at the transform with the rules and regulations. Uh, uh, I, I think the network, we need really, need, you have so much to tell us. Uh, we, what you just saw is the live feed of what is happening in uh, Benin specifically. And I also understand that uh, our correspondent has spread across the state. But we can see a very peaceful atmosphere. It means that uh, the exercise has begun, or this probably was a few minutes to 8 o'clock, where they were coming with the voting material. But anytime soon, we'll be getting what the real-time issues are. So, Kunu, let's look at it. We're talking about 13 hotspots have been identified. I'm sorry, 13 local governments. Out of the 18 local governments, hotspots have been you know, identified. We're talking about uh, five in North Senatorial District. We are talking about um, five in uh, Edo South. And then we have um, three in Edo Central. Talking about the Edo South, we have the Esako West, the Esako East, the Esako Central, Owan West, and Akuko Edo. Now, the North is where the two deputy governors, I mean, the deputy governors' uh, candidates, let me call them candidates, <coughs> yeah. for the purpose of this conversation, came from. And, uh, exactly. And that's also where Oshamole came from. And it tells you that um, there's so much about the struggle for control. I, I like us to first of all understand how it's divided. So you have um, Edo South, uh, which has uh, about seven, you have Edo Central about five, you have Edo North, that has about six, in terms of the, the local, local government. government. Now, as we speak, um, Edo North has an APC member representing it at the National Assembly, but Edo Central and Edo South has P have PDP representing it at the National as Assembly. As senators now. As senators. It tells you first that despite the fact that you had, you had an APC governor, who is not a PDP governor. <laughs> it's important. You need, you need to ask the question that what work did they do at the grassroots level such that of the three senatorial districts you have only, the former governor has only one of the three senatorial candidates represented. It tells you something that many people are not referring to. In fact, political watchers and analysts are not looking at that particular one. And don't be deceived. You are talking about before now, when the governor was an APC member, they took two senatorial seats from him. Now you are talking about. But have you also considered the House of Assembly? Well, that's. Because some people also say that's yeah, a grassroots. No, no, that's a grassroots. I agree, but I just decided to look at that. Very important. Yes, very that important. If statistics. you have three senatorial districts, but it too happens to be controlled now by the PDP, it tells you something that is important. And at the same time, don't forget that I was talking about the Akoko Edo area before. 
that if you're talking about the languages spoken, for instance, if you're talking about Edo South, Edo South is mainly uh, the Essam people. If you're talking about the uh, Edo, uh, yes, if you talk about Edo Central, you could have the Benin and all of that in the Yorubas, the Shekiris, the Orobos. Then if you're talking about Edo North, you have the Afemai, Afemai. you have the Sabongidaura, you have the Akuku Ebobobo, the people that from Unemenekwa come to Akuku Edo and all of that. Those are the people. Now, I, I, I think that one of the things that stands very important in this election is the fact that would there be a consolidation of the senatorial strength in these areas. And if you're talking about the hot spots you've mentioned also, well, hot spots first for a diet or not is the fact that you've mentioned something. You have two deputies, as it were, come from there. You have a former national chairman of the party come from that region because Oshomole is Afemai. So it tells you that it is likely going to be a battlefront to make a statement that although you say you're from here, well, yes, of course, because a situation where don't forget that Oshomole is a man who prides himself in first ending the political career and uh, strength of Aneni. And who believes. And supposed end of Godfatherism. Godfather, he said, but Godfatherism <laughs> is very, very evident here. It's very evident. And at the same time, don't forget that there are certain things made, statement made by Obaseki that is instructive here. Obaseki said some things I think is about. Uh, seven, eight months ago, that in Lagos, the political elites don't go to allow sign in Keja, they go to Bodilon. That the political elites in Edo should not come to Osadebe House, that they should go to Iyamo, where Adam Soshomole has his house. It tells you that certain statements have been made there, that as far as political elites are concerned, um, this is not a government that will begin to follow your rule. It's a government that wants to strengthen the grassroots. And for many people who have talked, they said, it's the political elites that helped you to power. It's the political okay. mediation that gave okay. you the strength let, to Let me quickly interject. Uh, okay, we please. have um, an observer who is also giving us a live update. Uh, we understand we have Femi Lawson. Femi Lawson works with um, Women Arise Initiative and is here to give us some update. Femi, good morning. Good morning, I'm with you. Oh yeah, please quickly give us an update of what is happening. I can see that you are in your full game. I can hear you. Yeah, can you tell us what is going on right where you are? Where exactly are you? If you can hear me, please try and uh, Presently, you. I'm at uh, the point where electoral materials are being distributed. I'm in Ward 2, already local government okay. area of Edo State. And what is going on here right now is the distribution of, you know, voting materials, the ballot paper and the boxes, and the uh, voting unit in this war. Okay. I can hear you. Okay. Um, well, can you tell us whether the... Um, I can hear you. The officials, were they able to come to the centers on time? Okay, Femi, uh, while you're struggling to get the network uh, fixed, I understand that your location is seriously having a network challenge. Yeah, we we're just talking about um, the, the importance of uh, the, the statistics that we have there. So talking about the hot spot, you know, you just mentioned the Oredo now. It's one of the areas that where we say we are going to have yeah. some likely violence. Yeah. And from the look of things, I think we've not had such case so far. Well, don't forget that um, perhaps one of the things the police did uh, from midnight, uh, let me say 11.59 of yesterday, up until 6, if you do not have business on the streets, especially the electorate, because usually polling booths or polling centers are very close to your place of res residence, so you are not expected to move around. For instance, is, an, is somebody monitoring the election? So he has an approval to move around to monitor the election. Um, the governor himself doesn't have that luxury of monitoring an election the governor can vote and get back. And of course, when they're talking about moving about, usually at uh, the places you could use your foot or your feet to go around, you'll be able to do that. But I'm wondering if it is possible for the state governor not to be allowed to move around, uh, considering that he's a state governor, 
And I'm also wondering if the former national chairman, Adam Sushomole, will be stopped from moving about in his vehicle because he wouldn't be expected to walk up and down the place. So those are also questions that could be answered maybe when we see more okay. visuals. But what is important in this instance is okay. that... Uh, okay, okay. You, you, oh, sorry for continuing. Okay. Uh, no we understand we have Femi on phone. I think it's better we do a phone conversation. Femi, quickly bring us up to speed where you are and uh, what's the process like? is the distribution of voting material across the polling units in this world. So this has commenced better than expected, but every you know agent, presiding officers, and their assistants from the various units are here collecting you know, their voting material. And uh, that is being done speedily by the INEC uh, that are and uh, in, you know, crowd of uh, anxious uh, voters who are waiting, some waiting to export so these materials to their various colleagues. I've been waiting, you know, for some time at the various colleagues and we have the materials. So now the materials are not being distributed. The vehicles are available to take them to the various colleagues. And uh, the precise officers are all concerned in this work. The necessary posting materials are of course and only to, to proceed to their community. Okay. Um, while we're still staying on you, we just quickly want to inform our viewers that some of the visuals we have for you are from Emokpai Primary School in World 3, where Governor Obaseki is casting his vote. And um, Femi Lawson is also live and uh, is currently in Ward 2 of Oredo local government. That's also in Benin City, I'm aware. It's one of those uh, big local governments. So Femi is still talking about the issues there. Have there been any reports of violence? Well, uh, about the uh, in the last 48 hours, is that uh, there has not been any reporting of violence, even though the tension has been high before now, but uh, relatively there have been these uh, voters are massively anxious you know, to cast their vote. And uh, there has not been any reported case Okay, um, f um, I'm sure that Trevi will give us more update. And uh, do we have Wiley Ogwade on the line too? Okay, uh, because I understand Wiley Ogwade should be getting feed from some of his uh, guys who are in Edo State to give us some update. But looking at what he said, he said in the last 48 hours it's been peaceful uh, that in spite of the tension, and that reminds me of, uh, I think about eight years ago when Oshomole was seeking re-election. There was so much tension in the build-up to the election. Yeah. And shockingly, it was, if there's any word called more than peaceful, that's how the process happened. Well, so I, I'm I, even I, okay. foreseeing such a situation here. Well, I, I want you to know that you said something in your opener that um, Edo people, uh, more or less, apart from being cosmopolitan, is their level of education, their level of civility the importance that they place on their own lives than on the election. Uh, don't forget that we could actually refer to certain things that perhaps could make the election most likely peaceful. Initially, before um, the, last, uh, spoke, the last person who spoke came on board, I talked about the curfew from 11.59 p.m. To, 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 to 6 p.m. today. That's one. Then secondly, we talked about a situation where you have over 2.2 million PVCs, then you are about 1.7 million actually collected. Then it could be that of the 1.7 million, maybe about a million or less will participate in the election. So that is another thing that we have to look at. Then apart from that, don't forget that um, when the monitoring group spoke, uh, a woman talked about the mediation of the Oba of Benin, who said, well, 
you people have to behave yourselves. I watched that. I saw how they hugged each other. Even if uh, from the chemistry I saw, it might not be genuine. But the fact that somebody has come, somebody that is highly respected, has actually spoken to both parties and said, you people should behave yourselves. Everything is about a do. You people. Even the other from... is speaking to two. The, uh, the other the, the spoke to two. Who have actually because, been issued. Because of the tendency for violence from the two. From the two. And because of the group or the numbers they command. So violence will likely emanate if at all it should, but we should perish that thought from the two major political parties. And if, we've, if, if we do a review of the conversations and the brickbats from both parties, you'd agree with me that the tendency is all, is all over there. And I'm very happy that this is a conversation that actually brought the upper of Benin to the fore. That's he true. called them into his palace, apart from him speaking in front of the highly revered chiefs. So for them to have actually been called into that space, it means very well that it's something very important. But it's not left for them to reason through. Don't forget, initially, we're talking about the reason for that, for, 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 for what is happening. Now, apart from the PDP holding two of the three senatorial districts, you also have to consider the fact that the governor will want to make a statement that I'm the one in power. Although I feel very uncomfortable by the fact that within the last four or five months, not less than seven or eight people have resigned from his cabinet. Hmm. And he tells, even up until last week, we have one person also resigned. Trust me, that's one of the conversations we'll have in oh. the second segment. Okay, fine. Yeah, quite, quite, quite informative and it's something that uh, maybe by the time, because as we speak, I, some of them should have been voting now. Yeah. And it's something that we would look at uh, holistically. Yeah, we also showed you clips of uh, what happened then and to also look at the import of the monarch trying to um, calm them down because we're, we're trying to remember some of the things he said. He said there had never been this kind of tension in the state, in the state yeah. like we have it here. That's true. And talking about the importance of the, the, the royalty, it's not just about the Benin people having more than 50% of the voters. Yeah. They are actually the deciding factor. Yeah. It's something that we will also look at. I wish we could cover all And at ground. the same time, if you even look at Obaseki and Izeyamu, where are they from? They are both from Benin. So it tells you that a house that is divided against itself cannot stand. No, Adeni, what I'm even looking at is, um, you know, there is this also the conversation around power rotation. And you know, we've had before now, Osarome Osubo is from Benin. And when he, uh, for whatever reasons, he had his eight years, mm -hmm. and we have Osubo, who is from Isha. Yeah. You know, that's the third, uh, the third uh, area yeah, that we are talking about. By, uh, yeah. And he just spent one year, and we had somebody from the Edo North. And after his Afemai, eight years, he, he brought another Benin. And people would say, why not the Isha? Yeah. But when you look at the, <laughs> the quantum of votes you will get from Benin, the the, the, the arrangement has to come back to them. Well, you should also So understand. when is it going to be the turn? Well, don't forget that um, building, building up to this election, um, they said one of the questions they asked Obaseki that he could not answer was that if we support you, will it come back to the Eastern people? And he did not answer that question. As a matter of fact, he did all he could to avoid answering the question. And perhaps it's the promise that um, Ize Yamo has given to the people. But promises at times are things that you could make. They are bound to fail uh, because you never can tell what is going to happen post-elections.